We're sitting with Bill Spratley. Um, he is another member of Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. Welcome to Say Brother. Okay, Thank you. and we re welcome you, Jerry Cummings. Thank you. Okay, um, you were mentioning that you were um, into law or dealing with the legal aspects mm -hmm. of what's happening and where you came from. Where'd you come from? Petersburg, Virginia. Okay, what were you doing actually before you got off into music? Well, I was working uh, with the criminally insane, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in a mental institution. Wow, and how? How is it that, I know we went over some of these things, but for our folks, how is it that you came from um, what you were doing into this area? Well, I guess uh, you could say it's the genius of Mr. Melvin, for real. Because really? It Why was, do you say that? It was him that uh, got in contact with me, you know. He called me and uh, said that he wanted me to do the job. But in working in working with a criminally insane, how is it that he knew that you had anything to do with well, the entertain, had, entertainment well, world? Well, see, I had formerly been with uh, the Nat Turner Rebellion. Uh-huh, which is? A, it was a group uh, that we recorded for uh, Fully Groove Recording Company. Uh-huh. And uh, it was Joe Jefferson, Major Harris, and another brother named Ron Hopper. He lives in Baltimore, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we disbanded and mm -hmm. went different directions. Mm -hmm. And the direction that I went was back down south, you right know, on. because uh, I had some things that I could do down there. Right. So I was doing that, you know. I was into promotion, like promoting young acts down south, you know, because they have a lot of good talent down there. It's like an untapped resource. Really? Yeah. How, how are they being dealt with in terms of, I know the folks in Boston and New York, uh, New York, I suppose, is... Uh, easier to be recognized in the, in the sense that there are more places to go to, mm -hmm. yet the competition, therefore, becomes much greater. Um, so it's hard to find a jump-off point. Mm -hmm. But uh, in terms of the areas that you were dealing with in the South, mm -hmm. um, how are the, how is the talent dealt with there? Well, see, they have uh, an outlet in Virginia, in Richmond. Uh, they've gotten one hit out of their uh, Alpha Studios. In Richmond, mm -hmm. by a group named Poison, mm -hmm. and they've been on tour with the Average White Band, and, mm -hmm. you know. And this, whether the studio gets a name for itself by getting hit records out of it, and they're building that, you know. And they just got good talent down there for real. And so they feed themselves into their. Do they really need agents or managers or something to well, get them in there? Well, a lot of uh, people are noticing them now, you know. There's another group that's coming up. Very soon, that uh, the fellow that I mentioned, Joe Jefferson, uh -huh. he's uh, going to produce them, uh, mm -hmm. call Eugene, mm -hmm. and they're bad. Mm -hmm. They are really nice. Okay, let me get back to the Blue Notes for a minute, mm -hmm. Jerry. Um, in referring to something that uh, Bill had said about the genius of Mr. Melvin, is that how you feel about Mr. Melvin, Harold Melvin, that he is a genius in his field? Um, I think has I think uh, Mr. Melvin has uh, become a master uh, in putting together talent mm -hmm. and developing talent. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, like when he first met me, he told me that uh, that uh, I was the first tenor and I was singing like bass and baritone at the time. You know, and uh, he had been around so many first tenors that uh, I guess he knew. But I didn't know, and uh, he he did help me develop it. And uh, did he train you himself, or send you to school, or he just saw what you? No, he you trained had? me his, himself. Uh -huh. You know, from the knowledge that he had. Uh -huh. You know, and, I guess that uh, doesn't happen too often in this industry. No. No. You know, no. and uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, doing a few lead songs in the future. Uh -huh. You know. Are and, you singing uh, on this most recent album? That. Um, Wake, Wake up, up everybody. everybody. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and how about the one that's coming out? I guess you're definitely on the, the next right. one. Right. What's the name of the next one? You mentioned it earlier. Uh, there's always room for one more. There's always room for one more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I guess you're singing on that too, Bill. That's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. You know, we uh, we're very happy with the reception that Boston has given us. You know, believe me. I'm very surprised with it. Not that they gave you a good reception, but as basically Boston has a um, reputation for being very cold. And I'm a mm -hmm. Bostonian, so I can say it, y'all. Yeah. And um, 
basically very cold. I know, Brian, you come from this area, too, and you right. found the same thing, but um, I've not found that with you folks. Find Boston very hot to play to. Yeah. Uh, Boston audiences tend to sit and remain cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, What they read to be cool. Right. <laughs> okay. What, what they believe. <laughs> okay. And uh, artists, usually when they perform, want some type of response. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they don't get that response, the performance suffers because they're not getting any feedback. It's like, you know, a dead wall. And Boston audiences are famous for that. You know, many artists won't come to Boston for that reason. Uh, a lot of artists come and in the middle of an engagement will cancel out. They'll just say, no, you know, I'm tired of singing for myself. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a very hard audience to play. That's why I found this so surprising. Um, because talent can be fantastic, but the response, it doesn't matter in most cases. But last night, um, when I had an opportunity to to check out the performance. I was very excited. I was excited because the whole crowd was excited and the place was packed and um, as I said before um, with that swimming pool being in the middle of the floor as you said you made a bet I think as a, you know you will mm -hmm. win the bet. Somebody's <laughs> gonna hit the pool you know they'll probably get out and still party because right. that's, that, that's the level they were at when I left last night. Uh, it's been beautiful. It's been crowded. People have been uh, everywhere mm -hmm. all up against the walls. <laughs> you know, I've never seen anything like it. But it's been like that ever since we've been back out on the road, uh -huh. ever since January. Mm -hmm. All the towns that we've been going in, people have been coming out, you know, to get the message, wake up.